Hey guys, welcome back to Data Wrangling in R. Uh, this lecture, we're going to jump into the tidyverse, not to be confused with into the spideyverse. Uh, Isaac, I already used that joke last last lecture. You told me it'd be funny. Well, it was funny the first time. Well, sorry, dad jokes. There's ingrained in me. So uh, for this lecture, we're going to get into a little bit uh, of the tidyverse uh, with some tibbles and things like that. So when R, R is a bit of an older language now, it's you know, 10, 20 years old, uh, and things that were designed at the beginning are no longer needed or the way that R is structured, um, things have changed since then. So the tidyverse is a way to format data to make it easier to play with. Um, and to manipulate, that kind of goes over top of the normal way that R uh, was set up. And so there's some R purists out there that are a little uh, disenfranchised with the idea of the tidyverse, but it does make things easier. Um, a lot of new packages use tidy data. Um, so we're gonna learn how to use it. Um, I believe that it makes life easier. Uh, so let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna create a new uh, section here. And we're going to call this Tibbles. So Tibbles are a modified data frame. Um, so now we will take the time to explore Tibbles. Uh, tibbles are modified data frames um, and let me make sure I got my notes up here to let you know everything <laughs> that you need to know um, which tweak some of the older uh, features from data frames R is an old language and useful things from 20 years ago um, are not as useful anymore. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the as tibble iris. So as tibble is just like as uh, data frame or as list or as numeric, it just coerces something to become uh, whatever the command is. So as tibble will co uh, coerce uh, iris to be run as a tibble. Oh. So if you get this uh, as or error, can't find as tibble, it's because we haven't looked at the library yet. Um, so let's load. Okay, so as we see here, I'm gonna pull this up a little bit. It looks just like a data frame at first look, right? Um, so we have the number of rows, we have the column headers, we have the row numbers. Um, it will tell us too um, what each column is. So it could say character, it could say numeric, it could say integer, etc. cetera. Um, this is a factor over here. Um, so it gives us a little bit more information. Um, and let's annotate. So uh, as we can see, um, we have the same data frame as if um, we would run just data frame on it or just open it. Um, but we have different features. Um, Um, you can also create a tibble from scratch with tibble. So let's make a tibble. So we'll do tibble and we're going to X down to the next line to make it nice and readable. 1 through 5, Y equals 1, and Z equals X. 
raised to, so the carrot up there, the two plus y. Oops, no, y. There we go. And then I'm gonna close off. And so if I were to run this code right here, you see we get a tibble where we have x is one, two, three, four, five, y equals one for everything, and then c is x from the same row squared plus one plus y so one squared is one plus one is two two squared is two plus one is five three squared is nine plus one is ten etc so you can make make tibbles with the tibble function um, you can also use tribble uh, really, um, for basic uh, data table creation so tibble is a way um, if you want it to kind of or tribble excuse me is a way if you want it to kind of like draw it out uh, so to speak um, so each of your uh, column headers you use the squiggly tilde under uh, your escape key there um, kind of like we would for a formula um, so we'll say gene a uh, gene b and gene c um, I like to put a some hashtags underneath because that's my column headers because uh, we're kind of drawing it out in text here. Um, so then we'll say 110 um, and we'll space over to here 112, space over to here 114 uh, and then we'll put uh, 6, space over here 5, 4. Um, there. So if we were to run this now, you can see we kind of like drew it out, right? So we expect it, our column headers to be up here. These are our columns. Um, our rows are the column header row, first row, second row. Uh, so if we run that, it takes what we kind of drew and puts it into a, um, a nice little triple there for us, or, or into a tibble. Um, but triple is the function that we use to like draw it out, right? Um, okay, so um, tribbles are built to not, or sorry, tibbles, not tribbles, tibbles are built to not uh, overwhelm your console. So um, one thing, a basic function, function of tibbles is that it doesn't just load everything. So if we have a big data frame, um, and we just call it. So from our previous lecture, uh, we had uh, by day. And if we were to print by day, um, you see, oh, this is uh, put into a tibulary. Um, so do we have any data frames? Um, so we can solve this uh, as data frame by day. If we run that you see we get like a ton of lines printed and it stops because it says uh, your max print is exceeded right so tibbles are are designed to not do that um, you know we could use a head um, and this is kind of what um, head this is kind of what uh, Tibble does by default. So it's kind of built to be a little more user-friendly in terms of how you um, display data and look at data uh, on your R console. Um, so let's keep annotating here. Um, we'll say only showing uh, the first few lines. Um, but you can print more if you want. So let's we'll move this up here and say, this is how a data frame prints. Um, and keep annotating. But we can, we can actually specify with uh, tibbles how many rows we want to print, right? So let's say, let's take the New York City flights 13 data we'll pick the flights uh, part of the uh, database. We'll pipe down to the next line. So remember that saves everything to, so the next line knows what it's running on. 
and we'll say print uh, n equals equals 10 uh, and width equals infinity It'll just give us uh, so capital inf there we go uh, which will just give us every row possible all right uh, 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 uh. is it flights ah. There we go. See, so it prints uh, the first uh, 10 rows and it gives us every column. So it's divided into two here because it can't fit every column. Like if we were to move this over and run it again, it would probably put more over there. Um, but so we get all 19 columns in the first 10 rows uh, of each one. Okay, so moving on. That's kind of a brief intro to, uh, to Tibbles. We're gonna do subsetting. All right, so um, subsetting tibbles is easy, uh, similar to data frames. So if we want to subset, um, let's create a uh, tibble, we'll say uh, data frame tibble. Um, let's do the tibble command, which creates a tibble. And we'll use the NYC flight data just because it's convenient. Um, flights 13, and we'll pull out the flights portion again. Um, so now if we were to call um, DF Tibble, it should give us the first 10 lines or so, yep, and whatever fits on the screen here. Um, it also will say um, which variables are not being shown, so there's 336,000 more rows and nine more variables that are not shown. Um, so uh, we can subset by column name using the dollar sign just like before. So say we want to see what days, um, actually let's do carrier. Uh, what carriers are using, uh, are in this data table? Mm -hmm. Closure is not subsettable. Oops, uh, because I need to use the tibble. That was, see, that's what happens if I was trying to use the data frame. Um, but if we use the tibble, we get a list of all, uh, or we get a subset of all the different carriers, which are the airlines, right? Um, you can also, um, by subset by the position using square brackets so um, we'll do column two um, and look at that data and I am forgetting to use the right data the right tibble data frame tibble number two uh, and you can see uh, this is kind of mm, uh, not a great example because as you can see the second column is the day so we just get a whole bunch of ones which is the first of January um, but just as an example, um, you can do that. Um, if you want to use this in a pipe, you uh, need to use the period, oops, period placeholder. So, um, say we want to use this in a pipe so our data frame tibble and we pipe it down to the next line and we say we want to look at carrier we do like that so we don't have to rewrite df tibble we can just do a period dollar sign carrier and if we run we should get all the carriers again which we do um, and so one note, I kind of talked about it above, but we don't, uh, but I want to have you annotate it in here. I forgot to have you annotate it. Um, some older functions do not like tibbles. And that's just because tibbles didn't exist at the time of the writing of those functions, right? So um, uh, thus, come here, thus you might have to convert 
so as we had before, um, so we'll do let's do class of df tibble. I should say what it is. So see, we have a uh, tibble data frame or a tibble or data frame. It's kind of a explanation of what it is. Um, now let's say df tibble two. Um, we can do as data frame df tibble, and we can run that. And then if we do class df tibble two, the one we just created, we run it, and it says it's a data frame, right? So you can easily, and if we were to look at these um, head of well, we'll just print a df tibble. You can see that's what we got. And if we do the head of df tibble two, it's showing all 19 rows. But you can see we have the same, the top here, uh, 830, 819, the top here, 830, 819. So it's the same thing, it's just a different data structure, right? So if you have a, some sort of uh, package that doesn't like uh, you know, using tibbles, uh, just one little command uh, easily sends it back to uh, the data frame. Um, so we're gonna stop there uh, for this lecture. So that's a brief introduction. Uh, in the next video, we'll actually use the tidyverse package. Um, tibbles are a big part of the tidyverse package, uh, so I just wanted to give you kind of a brief uh, idea of uh, what tibbles are and how they're different. Um, it's just uh, under the hood, they're a lot more different. They appear just to be data frames, right? And they say what each column is, um, but under the hood, they're, they're much more easily manipulated uh, with the tidyverse package and some of the things that come with that, like um, um, ggplot and stuff that we'll get into later. Um, so. I know probably at this point you're like, oh my gosh, if you're taking this course for bioinformatics or uh, some other, uh, you know, advertised name for the course, I promise you this stuff is useful and important. Um, and once we get the basics down, you're gonna have a much easier time going through bioinformatics packages and the graphing and the visualization and all those things that we're gonna get into. So bear with me. Once we get through the data wrangling, we'll get. Um, We'll likely get into more uh, um, topic specific uh, content. So, um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.